Shalom and welcome to this edition of Revealing the Truth, where we cover the headlines, the heartlines, and biblical truth. I'm your host, Messianic Rabbi Eric Walker. As you protect others, God's shield of protection defends you. In this special first responder edition of Psalm 91, Peggy Joyce Ruth, a veteran Bible teacher, guides you through a personal study of this psalm, explaining verse by verse God's promises of protection. The psalm describes a haven of physical protection, safety, and security that can only be found by trusting God's covenant promises when faced with life-threatening danger and fear, whether responding to an outbreak of disease or civil unrest. By directing this special edition to first responders, it works for the men and women on the front lines of the medical community caring for COVID-19 patients, as well as those who patrol our streets and keep our communities safe who have recently come under attack and feel more at risk than ever. This book will teach you about God's shield of protection and provision for our men and women on the front lines. You'll gain a deeper understanding of how to apply the prayer. Peggy Joyce Ruth, author of Psalm 91 books with over six million copies in print, taught Better Living Bible Study at the Midweek Church service where her husband Jack and she pastored for over 30 years. Known for her easy-to-understand style of communicating the Word of God, Peggy Joyce loves to teach and challenge people to move into a deeper understanding of the Word of God. As a popular conference speaker, she frequently speaks on Psalm 91 and other favorites. She continues to impact people from all walks of life and in many countries as she shares the promises found in Scripture. Joining us now to talk about her new book, Psalm 91, Frontliner and First Responder Edition, is Peggy Joyce Ruth. Peggy Joyce, welcome to Revealing the Truth. Thank you. It's so good to be here. Well, it's wonderful to be here with you. Psalm 91 is uh, something that is maybe one of the most personalized prayers in all the Bible, because I instruct people to put their name right in there. It's not a he he who dwells or she who dwells, but put your name. Peggy Joyce, you dwell in the shelter of the Most High. Take us back to the early, early, early years, the childhood years of forming your foundation of faith because what you've done and your legacy is to take people into a comforting, protective relationship with God as he designed it, but yet so many people miss out on because they don't really understand the fullness, but you do. How did that come to be? Well, I was born in a Christian home and uh, a Baptist home, and we were in church every Sunday, and I loved the Lord, but I didn't know my Bible very well. When I was first married and uh, we had uh, had a child, uh, a little girl, and when she was about six months old, I decided that I needed to go to a neighbor. Uh, she was an Asian woman, and she weren't burned a lot of incense and everything in her home. And it was very frightening when you even walked by her house. Now, I didn't really know how to share the gospel that well, but I decided I didn't want her to go to hell. So I was going to go and, and tell her about Jesus. Well, when I got to the door... I was frightened and I could feel, I just had a fear around her house and uh, her her apartment. And she asked me uh, to come in and I told her I wanted to tell her about Jesus. And she said, if you'll give me equal time. Well, oh my goodness. I didn't know really. I probably shared just a few minutes and then all of a sudden she started. I can't even remember things she told me. She just told me to keep my mind open. And, uh, I've often said, I think I kept my mind so open that my brain fell out. <laughs> I didn't find it for a good while later. But uh, I, I wasn't, didn't have any knowledge of spiritual warfare. Absolutely no knowledge. And um, so I went into just a, a, a demonic, uh, uh, where I just couldn't, I couldn't think, I couldn't do anything. I didn't know how to come out of it. And I just kept crying out to God. And God gave me one day a dream and I knew it was a spiritual dream and I had asked him that afternoon Lord is there any way to be delivered from all the evil we see coming on the earth is there any way for me to be able to be delivered out from under this oppression that I'm under and uh, the dream I was out in a field and I was asking the same question 
And I was looking up into the heavens saying, oh, God, is there any way to be delivered from this oppression I'm under, from all the things we see coming on the earth? It seemed like there were so many people dying. And I, I was frightened. And in the dream, God said, in your day of trouble, call on me and I will answer. When I heard that, it was like something exploded on the inside of me. And I was jumping and clapping and dancing and uh, praising God. I didn't know exactly what the answer was, but I knew I had gotten the answer. And then suddenly, the Lord had me look around. I turned around in a circle, and there were people being added to that field. And they were all praising God with me for the answer that God had just given me. Well, I, I woke up. I didn't know what the answer was, but I knew that God had spoken to me. I knew everything was going to be okay. And I just started clapping and running through the house, just praising God and thanking Him. Well, it was the next day that Pat Boone's wife, Shirley Boone, was doing a teaching. And in the teaching, she just mentioned the word Psalm 91. She wasn't teaching on Psalm 91, but she just mentioned the word. And when I heard Psalm 91, it exploded on the inside of me. And I knew that whatever was in that Psalm uh, was my answer. I didn't even know up until that time, I didn't even know there were 91 Psalms in the Bible. But when I turned there, oh my goodness, every answer to every problem that I had ever experienced, all of the oppression that I'd gone under, there were answers right there. And I started studying Psalm 91 for the next few months. I That's all I did. I studied it night and day. And oh my goodness, it opened doors that I never even dreamed possible. And after that, all I wanted to do was just teach other people. I wanted to let them know because I knew there were a lot of people like me who didn't know these answers. And um, so it just started uh, a ministry that has never stopped. You know, in your dream, God quoted to you Jeremiah 33, 3. Yes, it's there too, but it's also in Psalm 91. Uh, in your day of trouble, call on me and I will answer. It, it's there uh, uh, quoted exactly. So that's what got me so excited when I found it there in Psalm 91. Your story is so compelling, and for our audience to understand what I would like you to do in this time we have together, if you will indulge us, I would like you to walk us through. Now, this edition is, is for our first responders, and there are many other editions uh, in the collection of Psalm 91 books, very targeted, uh, very much like my good friend Jermaine Copeland, who has prayers that avail much for graduates and prayers that avail much for America and prayers that avail much, and she has done the same kind of approach in, in targeting specific groups and focusing in and making it practical and applied. Uh, but the magnitude of Psalm 91, the personalization and the import of it above and beyond the first responders and to all believers and to even non-believers uh, is encapsulated into a pure picture of connect the dots and the picture is always the same. It's always of Jesus, it's always of God's covering, and I would like you, if you would, in this time, to walk us through Psalm 91 as God leads you to share it with us in a way that our audience who has never heard this teaching like this before, and we are teaching ministry, we're not a book interview show. We are a teaching ministry. Yes. And would you do that with us and for that, uh, for us to kind of step us through Psalm 91 and package it so that it has the impact on our audience that it had on you? Because it is an amazing psalm. Yes, it is. I would love to do that. Thank you. Every evil known to man is covered in Psalm 91. And the Lord showed me that verse, that it's a covenant. So, you know, there, two people have to take part in a covenant. 
our part of the covenant is verses 1 and 2. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say, you're my Lord, you're my God, you're my source, you're everything, Lord. So that's our part. Before we even look at God's part, we have to make sure that we're that we're doing our part of the covenant, where we're choosing to say, Lord, I choose to dwell in your shelter. I choose to abide under that shadow of protection. I choose, Lord, to declare that, uh, that with my mouth, that you're my Lord, you're my God, you're my source. Up until that time, I would think my prayers a lot of times. And the Lord showed me that I needed to say it. I needed to talk to him. I needed for it to come up out of me. And when we do our part of the covenant, verses 1 and 2, then God says, okay, now my part of the covenant is verses 3 through 16. And God then will, <clears throat> yes. Yeah, let okay. me stop you there because I want to look at that word dwell. Dwell is living with. Living, yes. It is not living for. It is living in the presence of. And there's a big difference. A lot of people say, I live for the Lord, but I don't live with the Lord. I don't dwell in his presence. We look at Isaiah, for example. Isaiah was a great preacher for five chapters. He was an extraordinary preacher. But until he came into the presence and began to dwell in the presence of God, he was not transformed into become the messenger of God under God's anointing. Yes. That's when he began to dwell with the Lord. Great preacher, but his transition into that dwelling made him transformed into a great prophet. And the dwelling part is something that is not a spectator. It is full contact. It is full immersion in not doing more for God, but doing more with God. And it's such an important word that it needs very much to be emphasized that you can't do this as an outsider. You can't do this as an observer. You must do this always dwelling in his presence. It is a commitment and it's not, at, not part time. You are absolutely right. Uh, that's what the Lord just kept dealing with me on when, when he first gave this to me, that he wanted me to just run to him and just have fellowship with him, tell him how much I loved him, then let him uh, let me know how much he loved me and how he was always there for me. And that no matter what I faced, he was always there. And that, you know, when we dwell with someone, we live with them. That, that's a living night, day, no matter uh, where we are or what's going on. And when, when we learn to dwell in the shelter of the Most High, all of a sudden we actually know that He's there. We know He's going to take care of us, no matter what we're going through, no matter what we're facing. And I was so excited to find out that anything that I might face, any evil that might come against me, God had an answer in that psalm. And if I was dwelling in Him, then I was going to get that answer. And, and the Lord showed me that he said, I'll be willing to deliver you from the snare of the trapper. I'll be willing to deliver you from the deadly pestilence. Because one of the reasons I was sick back then, I was so afraid of sickness and disease. I was afraid something would happen to some member of my family. And the Lord said, I will literally take care of any of the pestilence that try to come against you. I'll take care of anything that's coming. If you're dwelling in my shelter, if you're running to me. And he said that uh, under his wings, we can seek refuge. And the Lord just, oh, he made that come alive to me because one day I was out in the front yard and our old mama hen had had a bunch of baby chicks and they were running all over the yard and I was watching and enjoying them. And all of a sudden I saw the shadow of a hawk fly overhead. And my heart just stood still because I thought, oh, no, there's no way that old mama can run and get all those babies, gather them all up in time. I knew the hawk was going to get some of the babies. And all of a sudden, I saw this old mama hawk. She spread out her wings, and she didn't run to try to cover those babies. She began to cluck. 
And when she did, those babies from all over the barnyard came running to her, ran under those outstretched wings. And when the last one came under, she pulled those wings down tightly. And that old hawk would have had to have gone through the mother to get to those babies. And I just sat there thinking about that. And I thought, you know, God doesn't run here, there, yonder, trying to cover us. He's made it available. He's told us to dwell in him. But we have to run to him when something arises, when, when evil arises. We run to him. And then whatever the evil is would have to go through God to get to us. And I remember sitting out in that yard and just meditating on that. And just it was just bursting on the inside of me that God was saying, I'm not, I don't run here and that, there. I've offered it. Now you run to me. And then when we do, then he covers every evil known to man in the next four categories. Every evil. I Go ahead. I want to make sure that our audience understands that, that God's not a bird. And so this, <laughs> so this imagery is not of a great bird. And it needs to be clarified because the pagans worshipped Yes, you're right. The great birds. So when God talks about coming under the shelter of his wings, in the Hebrew, in Deuteronomy 22, we are commanded to make for ourselves a garment of four corners. And on those four corners, we are to put tassels on those four corners. The Hebrew word for those tassels are tzitzit. Many have seen the Orthodox Jews with their prayer shawls at the wall. They see that the fringe, or across their bodies, the fringe, that translates wings in the Hebrew. And so when we see this translated as the wings, and we see that this was the garment that Jesus wore, and the woman touched the wings, that she was healed of her issue of blood. We see God having a consistent theme throughout that when we come under that shelter of his outstretched wings, <clears throat> that this prayer shawl that our Jewish people are known for, and as we hold out our arms and these tassels hang down, they give the appearance of wings. wings and God wastes nothing of showing us in the natural what the supernatural truth is. I loved it when you shared that. I mean, that just made something else just come alive to me. I really did appreciate that. And but when we run under that shelter, then whatever it is we're facing, uh, it, 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 he gives the four categories, the terror by night, the arrows that fly by day, the, the pestilence and the destruction. Any evil that can come against you will fall under one of those categories. The, the terror by night that covers all the evils that come through another person who could hurt you. Uh, the uh, arrows, those are all the thoughts and the fears. You know, so many people are, they have so many fear thoughts. It's not really any enemy that's coming against them. It's their own thoughts. Uh, the fears, the uh, uh, the terror that comes against them. And those eras are those thoughts, those fears. Then the pestilence, all of the sicknesses and all of the diseases. You know, I used to think that pestilence was just something that got on our crops, that ruined the crops. And I was so shocked when God showed me that a pestilence were sicknesses and diseases, the curses. And then uh, the destruction, these are all the natural disasters. And God says that he will protect us from all of those things. And I've I spent time trying to think of any evil that could come against us that wasn't under one of those four categories, and you can't. It, every evil falls under one of those four categories, and God says, a thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand. But when you run to me, and when you, uh, whatever it is, under whatever uh, category it is, he said, your protection is going to be there. If we just trust him, if we just believe it. Oh, I, I, when I when I first realized that, when the Lord began to show that to me, I mean, I was, I couldn't even sit still. I was walking through the house and praising God and dancing and <laughs> just rejoicing over the fact that God has thought of everything, everything. And there will be people, like he says, there'll be thousands who fall. 
uh, 10,000 at your right hand. But he said, if you run to me and get under that shelter and dwell in me, not just come once in a while, but you dwell in that shelter. He said, that's where your protection is. And from every evil known to man. I love that. <laughs> God is so good. And uh, then I love the, the fact that uh, so many people think, well, you know, it's nice for me to have protection, but I can't be happy if if my family's not there. And God even covers that. He said that uh, we don't have to fear for our families. Uh, I, I just love to every day thank God again that every member of my family, I call them in under this protection. And when you have little ones at home, you know, teach this to your little ones. Let them know that there is that Psalm 91 of protection. And that's why I did so many books. I, I tried to have a book for very young toddlers so they would know about the protection. And then for uh, kids that are 9, 10, 11, 12, then for teenagers, then for mothers and, uh, you know, for military, we, we tried to cover every different aspect so that, um, you know, sometimes maybe a, rant, a man could read the book and, and uh, maybe he's a military man and he would think, well, I don't know whether that even works for the military. But I wanted them to see that military men who have stood under this covenant and, and we have unbelievable miracles that have happened. Uh, in fact, in every different book, I've collected testimonies of people who have used Psalm 91 and they and so we put them in all these different books so a person can realize hey this is work for somebody else it's going to work for me too and uh, that has made it come alive for so many people I, I've loved that but. as we look at the story of Israel and their long heritage and this this psalm written for both in the moment as a prophetic word to David and what he would be coming up against and what Israel would ultimately come up against for all time as we know that there is still that anti-Semitism and persecution that God has supernaturally protected this small nation of Israel that seemingly cannot be destroyed, that the hand of God is over Yes. And uh, this is the psalm, uh, which is the uh, kind of the overarching covering, uh, along with uh, um, Psalm 122 about praying for the peace of Jerusalem, Psalm 22. Uh, so when we look at this, it addresses... Satan's weapon. He is the yes. author of fear. God did not give us a spirit of fear or timidity, but he gave us a sound mind. And <clears throat> fear is paralyzing. Yes, yet, there's, is. yet there's a promise made in here in regards to fear. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and I was so frightened. I had so much fear in me. And, and the Lord showed me that he, every fear, any fear that I could possibly have is covered in this psalm. And not only for me, but he showed me that uh, it covers my family. No evil will befall you, neither will plague or calamity come near your household. And that will take so much fear away from parents when they realize that they can stand for their children. Uh, but I'm, I'm always telling parents, if they're living at home, teach it to them. You don't want to just cover them, but you want them when they leave the home, that they have it inside of them where they stand on it and then they teach it to their children. That's how it's passed down. And uh, uh, I, our little uh, toddler book that we have for very young children. I, I'm just shocked at how many people will send me testimonies or, and sometimes even pictures of their child carrying their little toddler Psalm 91 book. And they're even learning to be able to know that God takes their fear away. That book really addresses the fact that these children don't have to have fear that when they're trusting God and knowing that God's there. And I just love it when these young people grow up. They know it by the time they get into their families. It, it's already inside of them. And it's just something that we pass down, uh, the family. 
This is very biblical because when Jesus was asked the question, <clears throat> what are the two greatest commandments? He said, and he started with Deuteronomy 6, 5. He said, love the Lord your God with all your soul, with all your um, strength and all your um, might. Uh, and the continuation of the thought, <clears throat> excuse me, the continuation of the thought and you are to teach them to your children and you are to talk about them when you rise up and when you lie down and when you walk along the way. That the beginnings of this is the upbringing of our children and the admonition of the world, of the word, and if they can operate without fear, if they can feel covered and protected, then the intimidation of children in the world today through social media, through bullying, through all these things, that they have this as the underpinning of yes. their faith, that they know that they will see it, but as it promises that uh, because you have made the Lord your refuge, that you will only see this with your eyes, it will not overtake you, and you'll see those to fall to your right and to your left, but it won't affect you. Yes. My executive producer and I live six miles apart. A tornado came here last week and was in our neighborhood, but <clears throat> in the six miles distance between the two of us, it passed right between the two of us. Oh my goodness, uh-huh. We saw it with our eyes, but it did not come near us. Yes. And yet a neighborhood was completely devastated, lives were lost, but we could actually see it, touch down and begin to move. And it was right between our two homes and we are a prayer ministry, so this, yes. is, this is just another example. Is it divine intervention? It, was it because of that prayer? Uh, we know by faith, we believe by faith that it was. Is that to say that those who were struck by the tornado were not people of faith or did not pray? That would be ludicrous to make that kind of claim, but it was so distinctly between the two of us that it traveled right down the center of where he and I live, and we've been in this ministry together for going on seven years. We've been together every day and almost every night and have done this together all along that we saw it with our eyes, but it did not come near us. Absolutely. And you know, God doesn't leave anybody out. It's not that God's leaving them out. It's he's offered it and the ones who reach out and receive it, have it. And so it's not that God's leaving somebody else out. It's, it's available to anyone who ever will reach out and just receive this covenant. And, um, uh, you know, that the, the last one of those four categories, the destruction that takes in the tornadoes, that takes in the natural uh, disasters, it, it takes in the car wrecks, it takes in the floods, all of these natural things. And, we have testimonies coming in all the time of, of people, even one of the testimonies, my son decided that he was going to uh, swim across this lake that was much larger than what he had realized. And we were watching, he got halfway and then he just gave out. And my daughter, my husband, we were all quoting our Psalm 91. We knew we couldn't get to him. And we were quoting that, Lord, I thank you that he is protected from destruction. And he said that it was just amazing. He said he would go under and, and just almost give up. And then all of a sudden he would feel something that would just uh, put him up above the water, give him another breath. And he was way too far from the other side. And yet a lady came out and threw a little life preserver and it absolutely just fell in his arms. Uh, you know, so that he could lay on it and, and rest till he could get out. So, I mean, God is just, it's amazing when we use this promise and stand on it. It is amazing the ways and means that God will protect whoever it is that we're praying for, whoever we're standing for. And um, uh, 
uh, I get so excited because we get so many testimonies that come in of, of things that God has done. And uh, God even gives us seven bonus promises at the end of this psalm. There's seven bonus promises, and I, I love those. Uh, you know, it, it's like he's already told us, I'll protect you from, you know, every evil known to man. And he gives us all those four categories. Everything falls in those four categories. But then he gives us the bonus promises at the end that are unbelievable. And we are going to cover those on the other side of break. We're talking with Peggy Joyce Ruth, known for <clears throat> her series of books on Psalm 91. This is the Frontliner and First Responder edition. <clears throat> Excuse me. And could not be more timely in this season of COVID, in this season of issues on the border, on what our country is going through, what the world is going through in first responders to terror attacks and to natural disasters. And the timing couldn't be more perfect. And yes, there is so much more. And we're going to cover that on the other side of the break when we talk to and continue our conversation with Peggy Joyce Ruth author of Psalm 91, Frontliner and First Responder edition. We'll be right back. Shalom. I'm Messianic Rabbi Eric Walker, host of Revealing the Truth, Revealing the Bible, and Revealing Prophecy, seen every week on the Igniting Nation Broadcasting Network. Our daily on-demand programming is available on our Apple and Android apps, and on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Android TV. We broadcast live Monday through Friday through our apps on our website, IgnitingNation.com, and on Facebook Live. You can listen daily on our audio platforms on Spotify, iTunes, TuneIn, and iHeart. Our lineup of best-selling authors bring you the most in-depth biblical insights into the most pressing issues of our time, including prophecy, Israel, spiritual warfare, and a wide variety of contemporary Christian issues impacting the body of Messiah around the globe. If you missed the live show, you can always catch up on the Igniting Nation YouTube channel. Follow us on social media and join us as we endeavor to heal the nations with the Word of God. With today's smartphone technology, news, information, sports, and entertainment, is widely available and almost unbounded. But what about the information that believers in Yeshua are looking for? Well, now there's an app for that. Igniting a Nation now has apps available for Android and iPhone. With our app, you'll gain access to everything you would in our website, from our featured guests to our live streaming shows. Visit Google Play or the Apple Store and download Igniting a Nation's new app today. Shalom. I'm Messianic Rabbi Eric Walker, inviting you to study right by my side through the Biblical Truth Library. Imagine having access to over 1,000 hours of audio and video teachings available to you through our website on a subscription basis or via our Apple and Android apps on an a la carte basis. Whichever method you choose, we promise to deliver new insights into the living Word of God as seen through the eyes of a Jewish believer. If you hunger and thirst like millions around the world for a deeper walk with God and the revelation of new understanding of the Scriptures, visit IgnitingNation.com and click on the Biblical Truth Library or on any device with our free app. Don't let another day go by without receiving your heart's desire for a new depth of understanding into all of God's Word. Shalom. I'm Messianic Rabbi Eric Walker inviting you to join me and my special featured guest twice per month with Rabbi Zeb Parat and Carl Gallops, and monthly with Dr. Michael Heiser, Dr. Michael Lake, Dr. Timothy Jennings, Dr. Mark Baker, Dr. Jeffrey Johnson, Drs. Michelle and Mark Sherwood, Dr. Kim Moss, Derek Gilbert, Peter Rosenberger, Brandon Gallops, Steve Fair, Stephen Black, for in-depth insights into Israel, prophecy, the unseen realm, the brain, spiritual warfare, overcoming shame, mysteries of the Bible, prophetic insights, the sensational and the supernatural, caregiving, addiction recovering, understanding the divided heart, same-sex attraction, and much more. We're proud to feature some of the greatest biblical minds from both Israel and around the United States. Check out our featured guest lineup and 24-7 feed on IgnitingAnation.com or watch by topic on any device with our free apps. 
If you can't find what you need, you're just not looking in the right place. Follow us on social media and download our free apps today. Shalom. I'm Messianic Rabbi Eric Walker inviting you to join me and Israel's number one rated guide, Edo Kanan, for our annual Israel trip. Our 2022 trip is now open for registration for our 18th trip to Israel. Our trip will take us from Tel Aviv to the Galilee, down to the Dead Sea, and four nights in Jerusalem. You will walk where Yeshua walked and watch the Bible turn from black and white to living color. Visit ignitinganation.com forward slash events and download the registration form today. No, it's not too early to take advantage of our payment plan designed to fit any budget. All of our trips sell out and we want you to experience this life-changing journey. Registration is now open for April 2nd to 13th, 2022. And we promise you, you will never read your Bible the same way again. Shalom and welcome back to this edition of Revealing the Truth, where we cover the headlines, the heartlines, and biblical truth. I'm your host, Messianic Rabbi Eric Walker, and we're talking with Peggy Joyce Ruth, known all over the world as the Psalm 91 uh, in Yiddish, we would say maven. That's the, like, the worldwide expert, uh, the go-to person for anything to do with Psalm 91 multiple editions, over six million copies, and we're talking today about the Frontliner and First Responder edition. Peggy Joyce, welcome back. Thank you very much. So you, uh, before we go into break, you said there's seven specific promises that God makes in Psalm 91, and so I want to hear about those promises, and then I want to talk about some of the testimonies and some of the many frontliners and first responders who you have placed this book in the hands of and what kind of response you're getting to it. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I wanted us to be sure and mention the fact that God even mentions the angels, that uh, when we're standing on Psalm 91 and believing God, you know, uh, his angels are there. It's amazing the ministry of angels that sometimes we don't even think about. We don't realize that when we're believing God and we're standing on Psalm 91, angels are put to work in our behalf. I love that. And he also then tells us about our authority. That is so important that he's given us the authority over all the powers of darkness. I mean, God just covered everything in this Psalm. That's what's just amazing. Uh, any topic, every every evil he's just covered it all and uh, uh, that authority sometimes what I've seen people do they'll really stand and really believe God and they'll say they're Psalm 91 and they love it but the moment something happens maybe they have a horrible pain in their body or or something bad happens many times the first thing they'll do is they'll run to a doctor or they'll run to the bank or they'll you know for it to get financial aid and, and and they forget that we have to run to the Lord first. We dwell in his shelter. He has to be the one to whom we run first and foremost. And then he may tell us to go to a doctor or he may, he may send us to a banker. But it's got to be under God's direction. It can't be something that, and I remember at first, uh, you know, if I would be studying my Psalm 91, but if something happened, my mind would run to something in the natural. And the Lord started telling me, don't do that. Run to me. I'm your protection. I'm the one that covers you. And when we run to him, then he will tell us exactly where to go or what to do if we're supposed to do that. Or sometimes he just tells us to wait and just trust him. Get our scriptures. You know, a lot of times the Lord will tell me to, to get my scriptures and, and uh, read my scriptures over and over. Anything to let us know that he's our protection. Nothing else is our protection. He's our protection. And then we can, as these things come, we have authority in the name of Jesus where we can actually say in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I take authority over this demonic force of, of sickness or, or financial distress. And it's amazing how when we start taking our authority, God then comes behind the scenes and miracles start happening. I, I love uh, how God just covered everything in this song, absolutely covered everything. 
You know, Psalm 91 was given to us before Messiah, but Messiah confirmed that authority in Luke 10, 19, when he said, I give you the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and overcome all the power of the enemy, nothing whatsoever shall harm you. And so because he said, I only say what I heard my father say, I only do what I saw my father do, he reinforces there's parts of Psalm 91 that you can draw a direct line to something that Jesus said, direct line yes. to something Paul wrote, direct line to what something that Peter wrote. And it connects all of this to say that as a standalone prayer without the Messiah, we're not receiving the fullness. And part of that dwelling requires us to have entrance into the presence of God, that no one comes to the Father but through the Son. So the first start part of this process is that profession of faith to make this active and alive and not just words on a page for recitation. And so the power and the anointing comes through the presence of the Holy Spirit, yes. which then magnifies this. It's exponentially growth, uh, grown. It's, it's more encompassing and has teeth to it that are truly effective and powerful. Uh, God, you, God spoke to me one time and said, it's all in Jesus. All it's in all Jesus. All in him. Uh, you've received a lot of testimonies. Yes. Uh, I love the testimonies when people start sending their testimonies in. Uh, th would you like me to share one now? Please. Yes. We, uh, I have this friend, and uh, she lives in uh, uh, one of the large cities. And she was headed to work one morning, and she said the traffic was everywhere. And she said she suddenly looked up, and she saw an emphasis on the top of a Suburban right in front of her. And she said at first she thought, no, that can't be what, it can't be what I think it is. And she said her heart almost stopped and she realized there was an emphasis with a baby. So evidently the mother uh, was loading the car and had set the emphasis up on the top and then had jumped in the car and taken off in her hurry. And the car was filled with little ones. And she said that her heart, she said her heart almost stopped. She knew her Psalm 91 and she said she started confessing Psalm 91 at the top of her lungs, covering that car in front of her. She said suddenly the car in front was going to make a left turn. And when they did, she said that she saw that emphasis go sliding across the top of the car. And she said her heart, she said, I don't think my heart's ever beat that hard that fast in her entire life. And she said suddenly that emphasis went just flying out from the top of the car and went flying out into the traffic. She said straight into the traffic. And she said she was just screaming Psalm 91 by this time. And uh, uh, she said it hit the ground. She said she was the one right behind the car. So she uh, nearly had a wreck getting out of her car and, and running uh, to get to the embassy. And it had landed right side up. And she said when she ran around the front, the little baby's arms and legs were just bouncing and jumping. And she said it had drooled until the whole front of its little uh, vest was just solid wet. And it was just, it was the most exciting ride that little baby had ever had in its life. She said, and he was just, uh, his little arms and legs were going in every direction. She said about that time, the mother had discovered what had happened. And the mother came running and was screaming. And uh, she was holding the mother, trying to comfort her. And, and, uh, by this time, ambulances had come and they got the baby uh, to a, a hospital. And in a minute, the doctor came out. He had examined the baby and he came out and he said, I've examined this baby from top to bottom. I can't even find a scratch on this baby. And we talked about, can you imagine a baby being hurled from the top of a suburban into oncoming traffic and it hits the ground, slides for a long way and comes out without a scratch. And I thought, only God. But the lady behind them was quoting Psalm 91 all, all the way. So we can do this not only for ourselves, not only for our children, but we do it for other people. When we see other people in trouble, uh, God's wanting us to use this to, to help people through the problems that they're experiencing. And I'm sure that little mother, she probably learned Psalm 91 and never forgot it after that. You know, can you imagine? I'm sure. <clears throat> yeah. Now, when you publish this Frontliner and First Responder edition, uh, you made it a point uh, working with Charisma House to make sure that this got into the hands 
of first responders and those on the front line. Uh, tell me what that was like. Tell me what that involved, what that entailed, and what you, what responses you got to this uh, very deliberate effort to honor our first responders because much maligned our police force much maligned, oh my, yes. uh, our public servants much maligned, and this new administration and new wave of, of um, diminishing the role that these very important public servants play are really edified in this edition. And I applaud you for doing that. But what impact has it have has it had how many have you been able to get out to these first responders and uh, I know that Charisma House is working with you to make that happen. Yes, but what's exciting it hasn't been out long so we're just right in the early stages but what's been exciting about it that I never expected to see happen we have people who have gotten hold of Psalm 91 they've seen it work in their lives and so uh, they'll They'll call us, and uh, we're giving them a, a good discount when they buy. And they'll buy 25, and they'll take it to their policeman in their town. And this is happening all over. And I was not expecting that. I was not expecting that the, the general public who had seen Psalm 91 work get excited enough that they're spending money to take this book and make sure that their policemen in their town, their firemen, uh, their first responders are getting hold of this book. And uh, because there's a lot of these people that are so good, they've helped so many people, but some of them don't even know the Lord, you know. Many of them don't, don't know anything about protection. And so uh, we're getting a lot of first responders saved through this book. That's what's exciting. But it's the public that's doing it. They're excited over what they've seen God do in their lives. And so they're wanting to be a part of the answer. And I was not expecting that, to be real honest. And so that has been just, uh, that was just a pearl <laughs> that we received after, after putting the book out. And we're just now beginning to get in testimonies. But what I'm believing for, and this is what I'm asking for, is for first responders, because we'll be reprinting the book. And we're hoping that first responders will start sending their testimonies to us and tell us how they put it to work and, and they saw miracles so that we can use their testimonies to go in the back of of this first responder book as we reprint it. You know, <clears throat> as as the uh, as the Gideons were so faithful to make sure that uh, every hotel room had a Bible, I would love to see a group rise up to make sure that every fire station, every police station, uh, every hospital, uh, every ambulance, EMT, yes. would have a copy of this book in their station house, that yes. this would be the mission of some group to form, like the Gideons, to say, this needs to go to the hundreds of thousands of men and women who so faithfully serve every day, who are underappreciated, that this is the greatest sign of appreciation that I'm covering you for your physical well-being, but more importantly than that, I'm covering you in your spiritual well-being. Yes. And although you're putting yourself in harm's way, this may protect you from that, but if it doesn't, I want you to know that for eternity, I care about you more in the eternal than I do in the temporary. And this becomes the key that unlocks the door to the conversation that leads them to Jesus and saves them eternally, regardless of what it is they face in the natural. We definitely wanted that covered because in the back, after we do the Psalm 91, in the back we have how to be saved and we give all of the, of the scriptures for them to be able not only to be physically protected, but then to have their eternity protected with Jesus. And um, My favorite part of the book is towards the end, right before the invitation, where you set it up so that you can insert your own name, as we talked yes. about in the beginning. 
and you give them the format to do that and the places to do that where they can put their own name. Yes. Because some people wonder, where do I put my name and how do I change the uh, he, the she, the this, the that. Yes. Uh, and um, I do that for funerals. I, yes. I insert the person's name and then I have to go through and fix the pronouns because there's the he's and the she's uh, that are in there. So it, uh, it takes a little bit of massaging, but after a while you get it down pretty well. That's right. Um, and right before that <clears throat> is where they can pray the prayer to yes. actually ask Jesus into their hearts. Yes. I'm, I'm, uh, I did not know about your ministry. Uh, tell us where we can find you online. Uh, PeggyJoyceRuth.org Peggy Joyce Joyce Ruth R U T H dot dot org O R G. Yes, so or I, they can call three two five <clears throat> excuse me. Six three two five six four six six eight nine four. And we have a girl who answers the phone. Uh, she leaves at four every afternoon, but uh, she answers the phone uh, Monday through Friday. And uh, she's very personable and uh, is able to answer questions and um, she loves for people to call her. All right, I'm, I must be, uh, I'm putting the wrong letter in because I want to be able to tell people what it is they can find. It's, uh, and uh, Peggy Joyce Ruth. dot org all right and they Peggy. will love the personal the three two five six four six six eight nine four they'll love the personal uh, touch that that uh, kathy gives that's so wonderful to have that as uh uh just a uh, a wonderful blessing to have that kind of staff once again, we've been talking with Peggy Joyce Ruth, author of Psalm 91, the Frontliner and First Responder Edition, God's Shield of Protection, as you protect others. You can find more about her at PeggyJoyceRuth.org. Peggy Joyce, it's been an honor and a privilege, and we are so behind what you're doing. Uh, believe that our first responders need this hedge of protection about them. Uh, this is a charge for intercessors around the world to get a copy of this so they know how to intercede on behalf of those who are serving selflessly their community. And so we thank you for the work you're doing and pray blessings over you and your ministry. And may the Lord bless all the works of your hand. Thank you for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. Thank God you. bless you. We're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we'll bring you the next edition of Revealing the Truth.